Hello and welcome. Today we are going to go over lessons 9 through 12. Before I get started with anything else, I want to show you guys something. So here's your coil. If you crimp the edges, like push it in and crimp it, it will keep them from uncoiling. I know that gets to be a little bit of a frustration. Sometimes you go grab a book and then the coil's way out to here and then you have to roll it back in. But if you crimp the edges, it keeps it from doing that. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the PowerPoint to show you what materials you're gonna need for this week. For lessons nine through 12, you're gonna need the Yellow is the Sun book, the tiles, the tally sticks, your abacus, the finger cards, the tally cards, your math card game book, the geo board, new item, we'll talk about that when we get to it in the lesson. I hope last week went well for you. Your child is getting into supertizing the numbers six and seven. For some children, that will be easy. For other children, it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. That's okay. Just let them practice. Remember, we do have a fifth day, and you can use that fifth day for extra practice. Keep it fun, keep it enjoyable. Lesson nine, is supertizing and ordinal counting. Look at your objectives. We're going to supertize eight. We're going to use comparison words correctly. And we're introducing ordinal counting. There are a couple items that were not on the PowerPoint that you will need for this lesson. One is appendix page three. The strips for sorting, these need to be cut out if they're not already cut out. Also know that you will be using these in other lessons. So if for some reason these get damaged, they get lost, know that in the back of your teacher's manual, there's another appendix page three, you can make copies. But if you can, to eliminate all the cutting, save these in a place where you can get to them easily. I would probably use paper clip and just stack them all together and use a paper clip to keep them all in one, one place. These next items are bolded in your manual, which means these are something you're gonna have to find around the house. One is a variety of books in different sizes. So I just grabbed some books. Notice I have a really teeny tiny book. I have a really big book and then I have some in between. The children will be using these books to use the comparison words correctly. It also calls for three different toys. You can pick whichever toys you want. I happen to pick these. These were handy. I have a dinosaur, a ball, and a car, or a truck. Sorry, a truck. We're gonna use these for ordinal counting. Remember, what's in the explanations is for you, the teacher. So make sure you read it. Here, when we're talking about subitizing eight, it's letting you know that eight happens to be one of those numbers that can be more difficult for children to do. Remember when they're using their abacus, we want them to enter the number without counting. That's super, super important. The child is going to practice ordinal counting. So here we have what's in first place, what's in the second, what's in third. The words we use like third is important because it's gonna help the child understand third, it's three, right? It's the third place. But what about the word 13 or 30? It'll help. If you have a child that's having trouble with numbers greater than five, it's okay because we're going to have more practice in the next lesson. Lesson 10 is ordering and we're also going to be practicing our subitizing. There's also a term they'll be learning in this lesson. This is the lesson where you're gonna to need to use the strips again, the ones that you cut out from the appendix page. And then there's two games you're gonna be playing out of the math card games book. And just as a reminder, if you notice in your materials, it says N2 and N6, it will say it again over on the second page under ordering games, it'll say N2, and N6. So here's my math card game book. I have it opened up. There's N2, which you're gonna need your finger cards. N6 is using the tally cards. So as you noticed, we'll be using those finger cards and tally cards often. 
So make sure you store them maybe in a, in a baggie or something where you could keep them contained. But also remember if you should lose them or they get damaged in the back of the teacher's manual, you can make more copies. For lesson 11, we're going to be working on subitizing nine and then making tally marks. Now the tally marks, they're only going to work on numbers one through five right now. In the materials, it calls for the dry erase board. I did not show this in the PowerPoint. This comes in the manipulatives. It's the drawing board set. So you'll just have to take the other items off. You won't be using it, but you do need the drawing board. At the top of the second page, it's using the abacus and wants your child to enter nine without counting. So if they do it correctly, it's gonna look like this. It's just one smooth move. If your child wants to count or feels that they need to count, of course you want to try to discourage it, but it's not always easy. So let them do it, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, move it over. And again, let's ask him, can you enter nine on the second row without counting? If they start with one, let's stop them and say, well, we know that all the blue beads is five. All of them are 10, right? Maybe help them to think, what do we have left up here? Guide them. There's nine. Just let them practice entering nine until they get comfortable with it. Also on the second page, your child is going to practice writing tally marks and they're going to write them on the dry erase board. It's just a lot easier than doing it on paper. If you notice, we have them drawing the fifth line straight across like a horizontal line. If you have a child, who's done this before and they're used to putting a slanted line, that's fine. Let them use a slanted line. Make sure you read in the explanations the importance of your child holding their pencil or their dry erase marker correctly. And if need be, you demonstrate for them. We're at the last lesson for this week, lesson 12, parallel lines, planes, and making triangles. This is the lesson you need your geoboard. Notice in the materials, it calls for some items that are in bold. Two hardback books, thin hardback books. We're gonna talk about things being parallel and not parallel. It also calls for two pencils of unequal length. You may not have two pencils, that's okay. Just two items. I have a colored pencil and a pen, unequal lengths. That'll work too. So the objectives for this lesson is they're gonna learn some words. They're gonna construct triangles on the geo board. If you notice in the warm up, it's asking you to show number cards from one through nine. This is a great place. If your children get numbers one through five, but really need to work on maybe six, seven, eight, nine, then use more of those numbers. At the top of the second page, the child's gonna be making triangles on their geo board. Now I have an older version of the geo board. The ones you've got, your pegs, if you notice, mine are pretty tall. Yours are gonna be a little bit shorter and they have a flatter head to hold the rubber bands. Also, the rubber bands you got are not colored. That's because colored rubber bands tend to break quicker. They, they go bad faster. I personally like the colored rubber bands. So I went out and I bought some and I'll use those. A warning though, when you're using rubber bands. So I'm gonna make a triangle. Doesn't matter how big of a triangle I make. I can make it this big. The thing you need to be careful about these rubber bands is, boom, there's a, a smaller one. If you let go, yeah. Now these don't seem too bad, like they wouldn't hurt you, but I've seen some that go flying. At the end of the lesson, you have some games to play. Remember when you're doing these lessons, you could do your lessons earlier and play your games later. Again, you also have a fifth day. Fifth days would be great for playing some of these games. 
especially if you have a child that really needs to work on their subitizing. We're done. So go out, enjoy your week, have fun with your children, help them learn and enjoy so they can understand and apply. And next week, we'll go over lessons. And next, next week, we will be going over lessons 13 through 16. Until then.